Good morning, everyone. I'm so glad that you could join us for a worship on this Good Friday. Today's story is probably one of the hardest stories in our scripture to hear. And yet it's also one of the most important. And so I'm grateful that you've made the time to worship with us this morning. I just have a couple of quick announcements before we begin. In this service, we will meet Mary, Jesus's mother, and Peter, his disciple, as they remember the last hours of Jesus's life. It will be a service of a quiet reflection. And as such, I ask that you depart in silence at the end of the service. You are welcome to stay in this space, stay online for as long as you need in prayer and in contemplation. But when you are ready to leave, I ask that you do so quietly so as not to disturb others who are doing the same. Thank you to all who are participating in today's service. Lori Chocha is running our tech. Dave Sproul is playing Peter. Kathy Shaw as Mary and Sherry Sproul for providing our music today. Our music is reproduced with permission under license number A 609189 of One License LLC. We begin our worship this morning, as we always do, by acknowledging the territory. This is something that is so important to do. And so I invite you to think of these words as those um, who are here in Southern Saskatchewan, and to think of also the words in the territory which you acknowledge wherever you might be. We remember today the land on which we worship. It has been the traditional land of the Lakota, Nakota, Dakota, Cree, Soto, and Métis peoples for generations. As people of the United Church, we remember and repent of the harm that has been done to our Indigenous kindred, and we commit to living in a relationship built on love and care for all. Our call to worship was written by the Reverend Gord Waldy from St. Paul's United Church and Grand Prairie, Alberta. From the busyness of our lives, we have come here on a day that is different. In the midst of the world which holds the promise of spring and new life, we have come to share a story of betrayal and execution. Come and hear the tale. Come and share the tragedy. Come and embrace the darkness. And I invite you to join me in the words of our prayer of approach. God of light, God of shadow, in our time together today, keep us aware of your presence in the darkness. Help us to see meaning in this terrible story and keep the fire of hope alive in our hearts. This we pray in the name of the man from Nazareth, the one who lived with a great passion for your way, the one whose death is nigh. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is number 78 in More Voices. That's our spiral bound book, God Weeps. <laughs> Thank you. 
hard one. We remember that Jesus is with us in it. And so we light our Christ candle today. I invite you to reflect on the story through the eyes and the words of Peter and Mary. I couldn't believe Jesus wanted to go to the Garden of Gethsemane that night, and he wanted us to go with him. I guess you'd say I was in shock. For weeks, Jesus had been telling us that he was going to die in Jerusalem. But to hear him say that it would be one of us who would betray him, well, that was hard. I didn't know what to do, so when Jesus told us to come with him for prayer, I went. But it was hard. Jesus asked us to stay awake and pray together while he went on to pray alone. And I tried. I really tried. But all I wanted to do was close my eyes and make this all go away. Maybe when I opened them up, I'd find out it was all just a bad dream. But it wasn't. When I opened my eyes, there I found Jesus standing with the temple police ready to arrest him and our old friend Judas leading the way. Jesus went with them so calmly that night. I was so full of anger and fear and sadness that I turned to violence. But Jesus reminded me that there is always a better way. Would you sit with me for a moment and remember? When my son's friends ran from the Garden of Gethsemane, one of them came to tell me that Jesus had been arrested and was being taken before the Sanhedrin. I grabbed my shawl and I found my way to the courtyard as fast as I could. I couldn't see inside, but I could hear what they were saying. They were asking my son if he was the son of God. And my heart, it was torn in that moment because I knew what his answer would be. He had known for all of his life that he was special and recently he had stopped hiding it. So I knew he would answer yes. And I wanted him to, I, I really wanted the whole world to know that my boy was the Messiah that we had all been waiting for. And yet, if he said yes, he would be charged with blasphemy and I couldn't bear to watch him go through that. It's a hard place to, to be as a mother, knowing that if your son lies, he might live. But if he tells the truth, he will surely die. And so I listened as my son, the one I have loved since the angel first told me I would bear him, but who has annoyed me to no end some days with his ability to turn my words around. I listened as he did the same with the Sanhedrin. 
but they weren't playing games and they weren't as patient as I am. They took him at his word and they condemned him. Would you sit with me a moment as I remember? I should have known that, that he would be right, but I didn't want to believe that. I've been with him for his whole life, for his whole ministry, and he had called me his rock. Surely I wouldn't deny him, but I did. When he was taken to the court of the high priest to go before the Sanhedrin, I followed so that I would be there if he needed me. It was a cool night, and I found a spot by a fire out by the gate. I was surprised when those people recognized me. They were starting to tell others that I was one of Jesus' followers. And I wanted to say yes, but all I could think of at that moment was what would happen if I did. I'd probably end up inside with Jesus, being tried right alongside him. So I denied it. I denied even knowing him. And as I, as I said it, I realized that I had just fulfilled his prophecy, and I started to weep. Soon after that, the Sanhedrin took Jesus to Pilate to be judged again, and I followed. Even though I wasn't as much of a rock as, as Jesus thought I was, I felt something drawing me along, and Pilate condemned him to his death. I knew it would happen. Jesus had said so after all the events of the evening. I was starting to believe that he knew what was happening, but it still hurt to hear it, to hear the crowd calling for Barabbas instead of Jesus. How could they ask for that bandit to be released instead of an innocent man? Would you sit with me for a moment as I remember? Wasn't it enough that they had sentenced him to die such a painful and humiliating death as crucifixion? Why did they have to hurt my son even more? Why did they mock him? His shoulders would soon bear the weight of the cross that he would carry. Why must he bleed with the cuts of the whip as well? I had always reminded him that he was to be called the Prince of Peace and the King of the Jews. Oh, how I wish that name had not been pinned to him with the crown of thorns they placed upon his head. And when they were done having their fun, they forced him to pick up his cross and to carry it to the place that they would kill him. Each step he took, taking him closer to the place of the skull. How could I have watched that? And yet I did because I am his mother and I will stand by him no matter what. But oh, it hurts my heart. 
Would you sit with me a moment as I remember? It was, it was hard for me to watch Jesus carrying that cross, knowing that there was nothing I could do as he stumbled and fell under the burden. It was just one more humiliation that this man, who was God's anointed one, had been so, so beaten as to not even be able to walk to his own death upright. I was so grateful when the Roman guards pulled Simon of Cyrene out of the crowd and made him help Jesus. Maybe in that moment, Jesus felt the help of all those who wished we could help as well. As Simon helped to make his last moments just a little bit easier to bear. And when that happened, it seemed to strengthen Jesus again for a moment as he turned to the women in the crowd who were weeping and lamenting his sentence. He told them not to weep for him, but for themselves and for their children, for all that was to come. And that moment, after all he had had done to him, Jesus was still full of compassion and caring for those around him. Would you sit with me for a moment as I remember? There are some things about that day that will never leave my memory. And as I remember him lying on the cross with his arms outstretched, it is the sound of the hammer hitting the nails that stays with me the most. As a child, I remember pulling the first of many wood splinters from his young fingers as he worked with Joseph in his shop but this was different. Against his precious hands and wrists that touched and healed so many, a nail was placed. And a hammer pounded the nail through his flesh and into the wood of the cross. That sound, metal against metal, that ring, and the look on his face, the spasm of his whole body, I will never forget that. Then the other hand and finally his feet are nailed to the cross and it is complete. My baby, my precious, precious son is about to die. Would you sit with me a moment as I remember?
As I stood at a distance from Golgotha and watched, I heard many voices drifting on the wind. Mostly it was the noise of the crowd who had come to watch and those of the guards who were duty bound to be there. But then I thought I heard Jesus speak. He was saying something about paradise. When I asked someone later, they told me that Jesus had promised one of the thieves that was crucified with him that they would be together in paradise. I sure hope that's true for all of us. And then when he had caught his breath, he spoke again, this time to his mother and our friend who he loved so dearly. And he asked them to care for one another in the same way they would, as if they were a family. I guess in a way they are, we all are. But I'm not sure what's going to happen to our family now. We're so scattered and afraid. I hope we can all listen to his words and care for one another. Would you sit with me for a moment as I remember? It hurt so much to watch him struggle to breathe as he hung there on the cross. For a while, it took longer and longer for him to draw each breath, but he was just gathering his strength. Then in a loud voice, he prayed his final words and then all the breath, it just left him. You know, his first breath was in a stable and now his last breath was on this hill called Golgotha. My heart just broke. No parent should have to bury their child, but I did. As I watched Joseph of Arimathea place my son's body in the tomb, I cried. I could barely watch as they rolled that giant stone in front of the opening. I had to leave him there in the dark because it was almost the Sabbath. He was the anointed one of God and we couldn't even properly anoint him for burial. I left him in that place, but I left him with a promise that we would be back. Would you sit with me a moment as I remember? Prayers of the People Day was written by John Vest. Let us pray. God of our lives, six weeks ago we gathered in this place to begin our Lenten journey. We reflected on our mortality, on our need for each other, on our need for you. 
Since that day of ashes, we have journeyed day by day to Jerusalem, to the procession of palms and hosannas, to the temple and to the streets, to the garden of Gethsemane and what lies beyond. It has not always been an easy journey. We have been stretched and challenged as we will continue to be in the days to come. We are grateful, God, that we have not been alone on this way. We are grateful that you have been with us all the while, supporting us even as you confront us. And we are grateful that we have had each other as traveling companions. You have created us to be in community with each other. And in days like this, we know why. Thank you for the sacred community cast in your image, shaped by your love. Help us as we follow Jesus together to broaden our concept of community, to include not only those we know and love, but also strangers, both near and far. And yes, even our enemies and those who hate us. Capture our hearts and minds with a vision of your kingdom and inspire us to work tirelessly to bring it to be in this world. You have shown us, God, what is right and just. You have shown us what it means to love as you love. In Christ, you have shown us what it means to give everything to this call, to live lives of radical obedience, radical humility, radical love. God, may we live our lives with such determination and focus that we might find the courage to lay aside the pleasures, comforts, and needs of our own lives in order to give life to others. Indeed, abundant life for all. God, you call us to be part of your kingdom. So hear us now as we pray for the coming of that kingdom and the words Jesus taught us long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is number 182 in Voices United. Stay with us through the night. It is finished. Jesus, the Christ, 
has died. And so we enter this time of holy waiting. And as we go, may God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, hope, and in death, resurrection. Amen.